Hello, Rehan Solomon here at Design Fusion. We are North America's largest Siemens PLM software reseller, and today I'll be talking a little bit about generative design and going over a quick example with you guys. So, what is generative design? It's a capability of CAD applications to autonomously generate a number of design alternatives to satisfy specific objectives or constraints. You'll get a better idea by the end of this video. So today we'll be going over an example of the stainless steel part whose function is to hold two rods, one through the bigger hole in the front and another going through the three smaller holes in the back. So currently this part is being manufactured traditionally using the CNC machines, but now we want to move to the additive manufacturing technology to reduce the part's weight while maintaining the required strength. Now how do we do this? Solid Edge offers a generative design capability that lets you optimize your part by inputting a few parameters and let the software do the rest. Here you can see the current mass of the stainless steel part is 1.84 kilograms. At the end of this video, this mass will be reduced significantly. First, we'll change the material to plastic since the end goal is to 3D print this part in plastic. Now, we'll create a new generative study. And as you can see on the left hand side, a generative design tree will appear. Here you can manage all your constraints and load. Now to define the design space, since we only have a single design body, we can accept the selection. If you have multiple design bodies in a single part file, you can choose which bodies you want to optimize. Now we want to preserve the regions where this part will be making contact with the rods. If we don't preserve these areas, it can compromise the assembly by affecting the fitting of the rods through the holes. And when you select the faces, there are there is an offset option that allows you to preserve a certain amount of area around the selected faces. Now we'll go ahead and add our forces. We'll have one in the positive Y direction for the hole near the front and in the negative Y direction for the three holes in the back. As you can see, using the XYZ components, you can define your direction very accurately for your force. From this left view, you can see the part will be slightly under tensional stress. We will also fix all the faces that will be in contact with the rod since these faces should not be moving. Now, moving on to the manufacturing settings, a key thing to note is the option at the top to prevent enclosed void creation. When using 3D printers that utilize powder bed fusion technology, Having voids inside the part will result in voids being filled with powder. So if you're using an FDM style printer, you can also choose your material extrusion direction. For our part, we want thin walled looking structures and thus we will set the material spread to 65%. Now before we generate the study, there are a few more parameters you can play with. The first being controlling the quality of the study. If you have a complex part with many constraints and loads, it would be wise to increase the study quality, though you do this at the sacrifice of solving time. For mass reduction, you can either use a percentage to reduce the mass by, or use the factor of safety to decide how much material to remove.
Now, for the sake of demonstration purposes, I already have a completed part here for you guys. So here you can see how it transformed our part to a thin walled like structure. And it now has a mass of 0 0.122 kilograms as opposed to the original 1.84 kilograms of the stainless steel part. So that's a mass reduction of more than 14 times. Now with these attention grabbing designs with unique and organic appearances, you can really take advantage of the new additive manufacturing technology by removing design limitations from traditional manufacturing methods. Thanks guys, hope you enjoyed the video.